Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Twitter has changed, but you don't have to. We look at alternative apps for Twitter on the iPad on this very special Sarah Free edition of iPad Today. iPad Today is brought to you by Go to My PC. The holidays, bad weather, sick days could keep you out of the office, but not from getting work done. Visit GoToMyPC.com for your free 30-day trial. Use the promo code iPad. And by Ford. Featuring available sync with My Ford Touch. Sync with My Ford Touch gets you to your destination with integrated turn-by-turn directions and directional arrows displayed on screen. Check it out in the new 2012 Ford Focus and at Ford dot com slash technology and by Slingbox, which just turned your iPad into a television. Slingbox introduces their new iPad app, so now you can watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you take it. Check it out at Best Buy or Slingbox.com. <whistles> yes, Sarah, <laughs> Sarah Lane, where she's here in uh, spirit on her iPad. But she's not here in person. Leo Laporte here. Sarah uh, is still on vacation. You know, she went with us uh, to Le Web in Paris. And then she and MG decided they were just going to keep on going. And they went to Barcelona. And that's where she is right now. But uh, she left me with the rain. She was skeptical. She was skeptical. She didn't think I could do this show all by myself. She said, you, you're you not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to produce it. You're not going to be able to host it. You are not going to be able to do it. And I'm here to tell you I can. So today on iPad Today, we're going to talk a little bit about Twitter... You probably have known. In fact, if you go to Twitter on your iPad in Safari, you'll probably notice there's something a little bit different here. They're, the mobile Twitter is uh, is pretty much the same, but they've changed the Twitter homepage. So here's mobile Twitter, and that's that's pretty much the same with the tweets on the left and this information on the right. Uh, up at the top, they've got tweets. They've got the uh, messages to you, direct messages and search. The Twitter homepage itself is grotesquely changed. Actually, you know what? I'm getting mobile Twitter. So if you were to go to, without the mobile Twitter, if you were to go to Twitter and see it, it's completely different. And a lot of people complain. But worse, Twitter has changed its iPhone app to look like this new Twitter. They wanted to completely change how you your relationship to Twitter, the Twitter folks say, and probably rightly so. People are confused when they get to the Twitter app or the Twitter homepage. They don't know what to do. It's 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 bizarre. Uh, they don't understand the jargon. So now they, uh, in these apps, they have hashtags uh, kind of explained. They have at signs explained. And more importantly, I think for them, they point you to uh, content that people are talking about. So you can just click a button. There you go. That's the new page. So um, they've got, uh, you're still following Austin Trends, huh, Chad Johnson? Look up at the top. You'll see Home Connect and the Discover tab is what's really new besides the reorganization. Click that Discover tab. And you'll find things people are talking about. Not your friends, not the people you're following necessarily. My thinking is the reason Twitter did this twofold. One, they want to show you how much interesting stuff there is on Twitter. And there is. These are all good stories. But two, I suspect we'll see advertising in here as well. This will be a good place for sponsored posts to go. Once you get used to the idea that you can go to that content tab and uh, discover you know, content. It's, it's actually a really good way to do it confusing to people and i think a lot of people don't even really don't like the new twitter app the tweety app so today on ipad today something we haven't done in a while we're going to cover uh a number of alternative ipad apps most of which i think we've mentioned either as app caps or in passing uh but things that you might want to look at if you just can't take the new twitter app uh, so we'll and, and as just as i said you can always use safari to get onto twitter but here's the twitter app uh, on the uh, on the ipad and i have to say i don't think it uses the real estate uh, particularly well this is it's is almost a generic uh let me tilt it a little bit so it doesn't look so whopper jawed it's almost a generic uh feed now i do have a uh, room for other uh for multiple accounts so you see i click one account click another account this looks very much like the uh the ios app uh for twitter there's your timeline. See all this wasted space? It, 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 
in on the uh, on the app on the um, on the iPad, it it's going to slide that over as you can see and put the content. So if there's a picture or a video, if there's not, it will give you information about the poster. I just I think this really is not only ugly, but just kind of difficult to uh, to use. So let's look at some other uh, choices here for uh, your tweeting. Starting with one that uh, Don McAllister turned me on to many moons ago and is still in many ways my favorite. He calls it, uh, <laughs> no one knows how to pronounce it, Usphora. And uh, I think this is a very elegant, maybe not the most beautiful, but a very elegant, clean, simple app for the iPad. You see here I'm looking at the timeline. I can scroll through it. Now, all of these have nice features. If I want to see more about Andy Anako, I just tap his picture. Here's all the information I can, and, and little things I could do like block him, report him, or unfollow him. I wouldn't do that. See whether he's following me. I can look at Andy's lists. These are the kinds of things that really make Twitter useful for people who create lists. People like Robert Scoble who have lots of lists. I have lots of lists. It's a great way to, to make some discovery of people that you might want to follow on Twitter. Um, you can also look at mentions. These are people who at you. And uh, similarly, when you click on something that has a link... Oh, actually, not similarly. This one doesn't. This doesn't open a side page, but there's enough room used for the links that you can click on a link within the tweet to get. Hello, there we go. Sarah Lane's name, or get the uh, item that was linked, and so forth. So that's actually. Some people like it. Some people don't. It's it's prob probably more intuitive. Things aren't sliding in and out. You actually, these are actually clickable links in here. You can see on the right hand how long ago it's been posted. Lots of additional features. And one I particularly like about is for the nearby page, which uses Google Maps uh, to pull up a map of where we are and will show tweets. As you can see, nobody tweets in Petaluma. Absolutely zero. Nobody in, Petal in the entire town of Petaluma even knows what Twitter is. That's why I live here. Maybe it's not pulling them in yet. There's favorites, there's lists, and there's search. You can save search, of course. So that's Osphora. Uh, I think it's very capable. It does use the real estate quite well, but it's not, I think, as elegant as some other choices. Osphora, Osphora $2.99 for uh, Twitter. Actually, that's the iPhone uh, version you're looking at there. There's also uh, an iPad version, and I think it's the same price. Uh, now, here's some ones that I think are even prettier. This is my favorite as far as... Uh, gorgeousness goes. This is from Andrew Stone. It's called Twitilator. And uh, let's see, it's loading up my account. Oops, you know what? Don't show this for a second. I thought I'd logged into Twitilator because I use, this is the one I actually prefer to use. Um, I might have logged out. There you go. Uh, this is the most expensive at $5. But uh, I think he's really done a nice job and he does update it frequently. So um, you, you get to use it. That's, the again, the iPhone version. There is an iPad version uh, of this as well. Here we go. Now you can see it. So he's using the screen real estate in another way that I think is quite interesting. On a single page, I see both my timeline. This is These are the people I follow and people who've mentioned me. And look, I love this, and I think every app should have this, in line, the images. So as you scroll through uh, tweets and so forth, you don't have to click a link to see if there's images in there. I think that that's... That's a really handy way to do it. You also have direct messages, and you can see, and this is important on Twitter, very clearly what direct messages are. You know, this has been, if one of the things people really don't like about the new Twitter client and the new Twitter page is they hide direct messages. You actually have to click deep inside the interface to find them, and that's because of people like Anthony Weiner and others. In fact, didn't um, somebody just, was it uh, um, the Two and a Half Men guy, Char Charlie Sheen? He just tweeted out his phone number to three million followers, <laughs> thinking that he was doing a direct message. And this, I don't, this probably happened to you, direct message fail, we call it, where you respond to a direct message. But if you don't do it just so, often that becomes a public message. And so Charlie just tweeted his, own, his phone number to three million followers. I'm the kind of person who does that. Obviously, uh, Anthony Weiner is a, a guy who does that too. Same thing. He was trying to send a direct message and inadvertently sent a picture of his... Uh, groin to uh, the entire Twitter army. So this, I think, is a nice way to handle it. Instead of just hiding it, which Twitter has decided to do, uh, they put this kind of airmail border around the screen so you're very clear um, what, what's going on there. Are you not showing it because you don't want to show my uh, private messages? All right, there we go. I often get in trouble. 
<laughs> Showing my private messages. I love this app. I think it does a really nice job in so many ways. You could change the background, by the way. I have kind of a generic background, but you can have any background behind there. These are trending topics, which is fantastic. Uh, there's a great search. Oh, and I should show this. It handles languages very well. There's Arabic uh, in there. So if you uh, use a non-Roman alphabet, you'll like that. Um, again, inline images are gorgeous. It saves drafts, and it does it again in a very nice graphical treatment, so you know this is your notepad. This is a draft, uh, not a final version. So this is Twiddlator, $4.99 from Andrew Stone. I think it's really, really nice. It comes with a bunch of uh, wallpapers. You can put some more, some more in there as well. It's just a, I just think a beautiful um, interface, the most elegant I, I've seen. You do have the choice about how you want to do inline photos. You, <laughs> celebrity photos turned on. <laughs> Find photos and links and searches turned on. The, the more you turn on, the more you'll see. I'm not sure why they distinguish celebrity photos. I guess because they figure you may not want to see photos from celebrities, but you might want to see photos from your friends. I'm not sure. Uh, it, unlike the Twitter uh, official client, allows the per kind of retweeting I prefer. You know, Twitter started this new retweeting system a couple of years ago, where when you say retweet, it just sends it out. Uh, I think it's uh, kind of bad form to retweet somebody without commenting on it. It's a lot faster and easier, and I'm sure Twitter did this because they felt like people were confused. So you can choose your retweet quoting styles, and they have quite a few styles. The traditional RT or the slash via, which Chris Messina has been promoting uh, in his uh, tweets. And you can also turn on high resolution images. And with this nice 1080 by 20, 1024 by 760 screen, uh, 768 screen, I think high resolution images are really nice. So that is, uh, that is probably my preferred one. Some people think it's a little bit overkill uh, and prefer Twitterific. So let me show you that uh, quickly. This is a very much simpler interface, but it's very clear, clean, easy to use, and has a lot of features, including keeping your saved searches right there on, and your lists too right there on the sidebar and trends. So all of that stuff is easily available. Um, I'll click on some tweets and show you what it does if there's a if there's a link. It actually, which is kind of cool, loads it down below. You see, I also get a pop-up of how I can handle that, including replies and retweeting. I can favorite. Translate's a nice feature, too. So uh, I think this is... You know, it really, it depends, again, on your style, but I think this is a very good kind of bare-bones Twitter app. This is free, but you're going to want the paid version so you don't have uh, ads uh, in there. That's called Twitterific, and one of the oldest, long-time Twitter apps. One more that I'll show you here that is a specialized Twitter app. It's called Hootsuite. Hootsuite is a company that designs software for the desktop and for iPad and iPhone for social media mavens, often for companies, uh, so that multiple people can tweet to a single account. The app is free, but you do have to pay a subscription, a monthly subscription fee, if you want other people to use Hootsuite. The feature that I most like in Hootsuite, this is very much like, and people will rem remember this from TweetDeck, this column arrangement is great, because uh, just like TweetDeck, and this is why people loved TweetDeck, uh, you can add columns for anything that you look at a lot. But you notice here a column for pending tweets. This is one of the few apps where you can schedule tweets ahead of time. Very handy for team tweeting uh, if you have a company account uh, or that kind of thing. It also does stats, which a lot of people, uh, you know, if you're, if you're in a company, you want to know uh, the stats on your account. You can see I have absolutely no stats because I don't. There, oh, there it is. It's loading. In order to track stats, you need to shrink your links with the built-in hourly short shortener. I use Bitly. But if you use Alley, and if you, if you use Hootsuite, you probably will want to use Alley. Uh, that's really great. So lots of information in here um, uh, about what's going on from a social uh, media perspective. This is a very powerful tool. And there are some others. This is the one I like. This one we use at Twit for uh, companies that want to uh, tweet. And you can see I have not only uh, Twitter here, but you also have Facebook pages and, and so forth. You have a lot more uh, on here. So it's, it's really designed for managing your entire um, social media account. So there's a few different uh, Twitter apps. I'm going to give an honorable mention. That's Hootsuite. Again, free, but you do, if you want to have multiple editors, you do have to pay. And it gets pretty expensive. 
pretty quickly. Tweetcaster is good. You can see I have many other apps on here. Somebody in the chat room is saying, Leo should look at Tweetcaster. I like Tweetcaster, and I certainly wouldn't uh, deprecate it. Echo Phone is also very popular. Uh, you see I have TweetDeck on here. I'm going to show this one. Honorable mention to this one. This is the number one app and rising fast on the iPhone. And, of course, as you know, Sarah's often showing iPhone apps on our iPad today. It's not an iPad app, but it is, certainly for the iPhone, the best uh, tweeting app on the iPhone. And, you know, if you're a, if you're a big fan, uh, then you probably uh, should take a look at uh, this. Other good ones, Yorofokuru, which is a very good one I use on the desktop. Um, this, by the way, has a nice feature. You can customize it here. It's designed, as you can see, for the smaller footprint of the iPhone. And I think if you're going to use an iPad app, you're going to want to have one that takes advantage of the entire uh, screen. But it's, I certainly want to mention TweetBot because a lot of people do, uh, do use it. But my favorite uh, of all of those, Twiddlator, I think Andrew Stone's done just such a nice job making a gorgeous app that's a pleasure to use and uh, gets everything done. So there's some better Twitter apps for those of you who decided after looking at the new uh, Twitter client and the new Twitter homepage that there's got to be a better way. There is indeed. We have links to all those apps on our website at twit.tv slash IPT. That's where you can go to find out uh, what we mentioned on this episode, but also watch all of our previous episodes. This is episode 76, so there's 75 episodes there right now. You can also uh, watch live. We'd love it if you do. We do this show, usually with the lovely Sarah Lane. She's not even looking at me. She's just kind of looking off into the distance. <sighs> every, uh, every Thursday at 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern Time. And if I do my math right, that'll be 21.30, no, 22.30 UTC at twit.tv. Also want to encourage you, uh, we do have an email address for this show. And if you've got an idea for a subject, because we're always looking for subjects to cover or apps that you'd really like us to cover, email us at ipadtoday at twit.tv. We're going to cover the iPad news in just a bit and go to the mailbag. But first, I've got some big news for all of you from Go to My PC, the Citrix folks. Remember that a couple of weeks ago, we said we were going to give away an iPad. I love doing this, another iPad too. Let me start by explaining what Go to My PC is and then I'll uh, tell us, tell you, tell all of us uh, who our winners are and tell, read you some of the tweets we got. So, Go to My PC is a fantastic app. You start at your desktop. It could be at home or at the office. But this time of year, I think a lot of people put it on their office computer so they, because they're traveling, they're going on vacation. Maybe they just want to stay home more for the holidays. Maybe you're a little under the weather. You put Go to My PC on your Mac or your PC at the office, and then anywhere you can get online, you can log into your office computer. That means Windows or Macintosh, you can use it from another computer, uh, iPad, iPhone. It's awesome, and the app for the iPad is absolutely free. So here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to try this right now. 30 days free. Visit GoToMyPC.com. Use the offer code iPad. You'll have it for 30 days. That'll get you right through to the new year. Make sure you download the free app on your iPad and give it a try. There is something absolutely cool about offer, you know, uh, running your office computer. Any app, any, you know, any program on your computer, sending and receiving email, accessing, accessing network resources, all of that stuff from an iPad. And is it secure? You bet. 128-bit SSL. So you can use it at a coffee shop. You can use it as you travel around the world. It's just fantastic. G-O-T-O-M-Y-P-C dot com. Use the offer code iPad. Click that try a free button. And I think you will love it. Now, we had an away for the holidays giveaway from the folks at Citrix. We asked you to send us a tweet telling us some of the places you might be uh, using Go to My PC as you travel for the holidays. And where, you know, you, where you'd like to use that iPad, too, and go to my PC. So we got a lot of... Jonathan Cuts, Johnny TK 36 said he's going to his mom's house in Texas. And he would use go to my PC and an iPad to check his work computer while eating awesome southern food. I hope that includes barbecue, Jonathan. <laughs> Courtney Fielder said she would use go to my PC and an iPad to work remotely from grandma's house. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with grandma for Christmas. I'll be doing that. Kevin 101 said he would log into his computer with an iPad 2 while hiding behind his Christmas tree, dodging Nerf guns and snowballs from his in-laws. But our winner, are you ready? Drum roll, please. Steve Big Band. Stephen J. Reese 
He said his life would be easier if he used GoToMyPC and an iPad 2 while on his boat in San Diego. Randomly chosen from the hundreds of tweets we got. Congratulations, Steve Big Band. You are going to get a new iPad 2 compliments of Citrix and GoToMyPC. We will be in touch with you. And we thank all of you, thank all of you uh, for participating. And don't forget, you, you don't have, if you already have an iPad 2, and I bet you do, you can try it out right now, free for 30 days. Go to MyPC.com, use the offer code iPad. Congratulations, Steve J. Reese. Steve Big Band. Somebody tweet him and say, you won! Yeah, they're saying he's the 1% because he's got a boat. It could be a dinghy, you know. It could be a rowboat. Doesn't that, he didn't say yacht. All right, let's talk a little bit about the uh, iPad news of the day. One of the big stories, and we just talked about it on Windows Weekly, we mentioned a couple of weeks ago the rumor that Microsoft was going to release Microsoft Office on the iPad. Well, they have released the first Office app for the iPad, and it is OneNote uh, for the iPad is now out. You log into, it's free. You log into your Windows Live account, and you have all the uh, OneNote features. We put our Windows Weekly uh, notes on here, so I can I can look at those. You can see it automatically shows up. Uh, OneNote is a great note-taking app. It's been around for some time on uh, on the um, uh, Windows platform, and uh, of course, it's integrated into uh, Windows Phone Seven. But I'm really pleased to see them doing an iOS version, and I think there are a lot of people who use OneNote in business, especially, who will be very happy about this. Uh, you can't draw on it. It is text only. You can email the one note that you create. I'll delete that draft since I didn't actually have a note. Um, but uh, there's no, it doesn't seem to be any way other than that to save it out to the iPad, so to uh, say a PDF reader or an iBook. Uh, of course, you can sync it uh, with the desktop using uh, iTunes and get the uh, one notes off of there and then share it with your desktop if you use one on the desktop. It's a huge story. Another app I can't wait uh, is coming out any minute now for the iPad. BBC has a, a, a software they call the iPlayer that for a long time was available only in Britain. If you love the BBC, great shows like uh, Stephen Fry's QI, they have announced they are going to release an iPhone app, an iPad app, and here's the really good news, 3G streaming. So you won't be limited to getting it on Wi-Fi only. So really huge news. Thank you, BBC. Not only are they making iPlayer available worldwide so we can all watch those great BBC, BBC shows, uh, they're letting you do it on your iPad and the iPhone and, your, and with a 3G as well. Very exciting. That will be out soon, I'm told. I, di I didn't see it on the App Store yet, but I'm told that will be out uh, soon, which is very, very good news. I thought this was an interesting story. It sounds like a joke. A guy walks into an App Store... They've, <laughs> they've created uh, an app, a real brick-and-mortar app store. Do you find it difficult <laughs> buying apps on your iPad or your iPhone? There's a new startup called Open Space that wants to, just like Apple did Apple stores, wants to, wants to open app stores for people with Android and iPhones and iPads. The founder, Robert Reich, says, well... If you have a question about which camera app you you know would be good for taking pictures this weekend, where do you go? You can come into Open Space. Sure, that's what I want to do. I want to go to the mall to get help, help with my app. The first one is open uh, in Boulder, Colorado. It's staffed by app gurus who make recommendations and try to eliminate apprehension. I didn't make that up. That's actually in their uh, copy. You might laugh at this guy, but you might also know that he's laughing all the way to the bank. His previous startup, One Riot, mobile advertising, was, was acquired by Walmart in September. Open space. <laughs> An app store in a mall near you. I just, I, it seems to me a little extra, than, maybe, but you know, who knows. Uh, also, some uh, good news uh, for pilots. The Federal uh, Aeronautics, what is it, FAA, Federal Airplane Association, Federal Aeronautics Administration, what does FAA stand for, Chad? F, frequently uh, autocratic uh, amateurs? I don't know. The Federal Aviation Administration, that's it, came to me, has approved iPads in the cockpit. American Airlines has started already. Instead, you know, you've probably seen the pilots going to the plane with, with, with a rolling luggage containing maps and flight plans and all sorts of checklists. 
According to the Seattle Post Intelligencer, a one and a half pound iPad replaces about 35 pounds of paper. That will save $1.2 million in jet fuel per year. American Airlines is the first airline in the world to be fully approved to use iPads in all phases of flight. They're going to uh, start it on their 777 aircraft and implement it across the fleet. The 777 is a perfect one, uh, of course, because it's, it's, it's a very high-tech fly-by-wire uh, aircraft. One more story. Good news for people. You know, Apple, uh, of course, has their own unique way of doing things. Sometimes I've been a little bit critical about it. And I'm not alone. There are people who say, I think I could do better, who post videos on YouTube with suggestions for ways Apple could do better. One of these guys, Jan Michael Cart, is a mass media arts student from Georgia. He, uh, you've probably seen uh, some of his videos uh, uh, on no notifications, faster app switching. Um... He, this is a guy who's... Whoops, there we go. Watch this. is actually really cool. Something not implemented on iOS. But he said, we could do, we could do it better. And I love it because Apple, instead of suing this guy... <laughs> wouldn't you like to do that? This is kind of like WebOS. Just slide. You hold, hold the home button and then slide to other applications running. Apple hired the guy. He just blogged, soon I'll be embarking to California where I'll be interning at a fruit company for seven months. I'll be updating this to chronicle my adventures and misadventures in the Bay Area. Big, big acquisition. I think Apple uh, is going to be very happy. And I, I know as a user, I'm very happy that they are open to these uh, enhancements, improvements to the interface. That's our news, our viewer questions, comments, suggestions, and yes, even voicemail coming up in just a little bit. You know you can email us at iPad today at uh, twit.tv, but uh, you can also call us. Our phone number is 7... F this is a, uh, a Google Voice number, so it's not toll-free. 757-504-IPAD. If you do want to leave a voicemail, make it uh, 30 seconds or less so we have time to fit it into the show. Actually, today we could have made it longer. It's just me. We could have had a much longer, longer voicemails. We'll, we'll get one in a bit. 757-504-IPAD or email iPad today at twit.tv. TV. This portion of iPad Today brought to you by our friends at Ford. And uh, and I tell you, we've been driving around those Fords. We've got... Well, who has the Mustang? Lisa. Lisa, of course. I, wow, why don't you have to ask? Of course, Lisa has the Mustang. So we got, a, we got a Fiesta. I was driving that last night. The Focus. Tom drove the Focus home last night, right? Tom Merritt. And Lisa's got the Mustang. All the 2012 Fords. And the thing that's great about these, each one has their own version of sync that's appropriate to the Fiesta. They have the simple sync, which, uh, which talks to you. You turn but turn directions. It's a small screen, and then they talk to you. On the Focus, of course, is much more high-tech. They've got a big screen in the center console, a screen behind the steering wheel, the My Ford Touch. Uh, you have things like AppLink that let your phone talk to the car. We've actually got video. We shot a bunch of video, and you'll start to see over the next few weeks, you'll see video of us using these uh, features. But i got to tell you about sync services. Now, this works beautifully in the Fiesta, of course, in the 2012 Focus. It's in all the new Ford vehicles with my Ford uh, Touch. Uh, but on the Ford Sync and the Fiesta, again, hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. This is all about safety, but yet staying connected. You press the, uh, I guess on the Fiesta, it's on the turn signal. You press that button, it goes, boom, what would you like? And you could say, sync services. Then you can get, like, traffic conditions, sports scores, news. It will read it to you. It reads it to you. You don't have to even, you know, because you don't want to have to look down at a screen. You're listening. You could say, uh, what's traffic like on my commute? I actually said traffic on my way to San Francisco, and it told me what the traffic was like. You can get your horoscope, <laughs> gas prices, movie times, and more. It's just one of the amazing ways that Ford is, talk about the 777, turning their, uh, their vehicles into 21st century high-tech cockpits. It's kind of not a surprise the CEO of Ford, Alan Mulally, worked at Boeing before he went to Ford and was the guy who designed the 777 cockpit. Ford.com slash technology if you want to learn more. And you can take a look, of course, by going to your local Ford dealer and driving one today. I'm a big fan. I know you will be, too. Ford.com slash technology. I wish there was some way that you could, because, you know, you can go to Google Maps, plan a very elaborate route, and then send it to your car. Things like that. It will text message you when the traffic's bad. I love sync services. Ford.com slash technology. They just announced, uh, I just read this in an Australian uh, magazine this morning. I'm so excited. 
that they are now this week they're going to start manufacturing the 2012 electric focus i'm so excited can't wait uh, iPad today would be nothing without viewers like you. We've got uh, some emails, some voicemails, some video. Let's uh, start. Do you have the voicemail, Chad? Yeah. Do, who is it from? Uh, sure. we'll, we'll find out. I just got a uh, two-terabyte time capsule, and my old three-year-old PC laptop is fading away. And I've been doing almost everything with an iPad for the past six months. Wow. Maybe you could give some advice on how to most effectively use an iPad with a time capsule. Uh, because from what I understand, you can't back up a iPad like you can uh, yeah. a Mac with a time machine. Uh, and with iCloud, do does the hard drive really serve much of a purpose? Um, anyway, maybe it's something you could talk about. Thanks. Bye. Don't, we don't know his name. Thank you, whoever you are. Mystery caller. And I'm glad you left a voicemail. It's a great question. Time, uh, the, the, the time capsule, which is essentially a Wi-Fi access spot with a hard drive, is designed exactly as you said for Time Machine, which is a desktop uh, app. And I have to think that going forward, uh, that Apple's probably not going to support Time Machine in the ways it used to. Because now they've got iCloud. And that's really what you're expected to use on the iPad and the iPhone. And it, it frankly makes a lot more sense. For a long time, in order to back up your iPad, you had, and you've probably already done this, you had to hook it up to iTunes, and it would take a while back up. Uh, and then it would sync up new apps, new music, and that kind of thing. Well, the latest version of iOS 5.0, actually I think we're up to 5.02 now, uh, doesn't ever need to be connected to a computer, which I think is really great. I mean, what's the point of having an iPad if you still need to have to have a computer. Uh, I think Apple planned this all along, but it took them a little while. They built a giant data center in North Carolina, and they updated iOS so that with iCloud, everything is automatically backed up all the time on the iPad. Now, you have to turn it on, and it's free, but only for the first uh, five megabytes. So you, you might have to pay for more if you're going to use more. If you have iOS 5, and if you haven't updated yet, do... Uh, you'll have an iCloud entry on your settings. And you see now we have all sorts of settings here for what we want to back up. Mail, you may or may not want to back up mail. In fact, I'm going to turn that off because my mail is stored on a server. But context, you bet. And by the way, it will also sync. So is it not only is it backing it up to iCloud, but now those contacts and calendars can be synced to my desktop, uh, even on, on a Windows machine. Reminders, bookmarks, notes. This is a controversial one, photo stream. PhotoStream backs up every image you take on your iOS device, iPhone or iPad 2. And not only does it copy it to Apple servers, but it copies it to every, every other device you have if you've got PhotoStream turned on. So you might be careful about the pictures you take. That's one of the issues. There is going to be an update we've heard to iOS that will allow you to just delete individual images. And I think that would have been nice if they had done that in the first place. You can also back up, and this is, what, this is the answer to your question, all documents and data to iCloud and you can and I would recommend if you're you, if you've got a 3G iPad turning off cellular data you you don't want to hit your data cap because you were backing up a lot of documents and data so if you just tap the documents and data you do have that find my iPad everybody should turn on I can't tell you how many times that's been useful if your iPad gets lost or stolen you can track it using the GPS and then you'll see here that it shows you how much storage you've used I pay for, because uh, uh, I had mobile me, so I have 25 gigabytes, uh, of which I've only used a few. You can even manage your storage. This, this is great. It shows you which devices are using how much, which you can see which documents uh, and which games and so forth are using uh, how much. And then, uh, you know, of course, uh, if the, uh, the basic uh, storage that it gives, they give you is for free isn't enough, you can buy more. $40 a year for 20 gigabytes. $100 a year for 50 gigabytes. That's actually a very competitive. I think it, it compares to a Dropbox. If you are using uh, your iPad with a desktop machine, your old Windows machine that's dying, and iCloud isn't really an ideal solution for that kind of heterogeneous environment, you might want to take a look at Dropbox, which is, uh, I think, a great service, a little more expensive than iCloud. Uh, it does give you two gigabytes for free. You can get more for free by referring people um, and Dropbox works with a lot of applications to automatically back up the data from those applications to a cloud storage. And then you can have it 
download it automatically to your Windows machine. So iCloud, kind of limited, really designed for the Apple universe primarily, although there are some iCloud features on Windows. Uh, if you have a heterogeneous environment, which it sounds like you do, you might want to take a look at Dropbox at dropbox.com. David Phillips writes, he says, I'd love to see a show that reviewed the best or coolest augmented reality apps for the iPad. I just got my iPad 2 and really enjoy Star Walk. That's where you hold up your iPad, you can hold it up to the sky and see the clouds and then, or the uh, constellations and then actually see what they are. Uh, named. There are other apps that use augmented reality. He says, I wonder what other apps are out there. Thanks for making such a great show. David Phillips says, a great idea, David. I'd love to do that. Yelp is one app that has, they call it monocle, uh, augmented reality. You hold up Yelp. Uh, the camera on your iPad or your iPhone looks at the surroundings. Yelp knows where you are from the GPS and superimposes Yelp-reviewed businesses on top of your view. That's kind of cool. Even better, and I thought about this when I, we were traveling in Paris, would, would be the ability to hold up your iPad and uh, show a monument or a, a museum and get information about that. There are some apps to do that. I will tell Sarah, and uh, maybe we can do an augmented reality show uh, real soon. Finally, we got this video from an iPad Today viewer. Hey, guys. I was just wondering if... Uh if I sign up for iTunes Match and match my music and then cancel the service, does it remember what music I had? So if I cancel the service and in two years lose all my music and sign back up, would I be able to download all of my music again, effectively acting as a backup? Um, I'm not sure if anyone can know that yet. It hasn't been around too long, but just curious if that would work. Can anyone know that? <laughs> Yes, actually, uh, I, we do know that. And uh, the, the very good news is, so let me explain what iTunes Match is. For $25, and I think this is the best deal in music out there, uh, iTunes, the new iTunes, you have to be running Lion, the latest OS 10, and you have to be running the latest version of iTunes. We'll scan all the music in your music library, and if it has a better quality copy of it on iTunes Match, it will automatically... Without any upload involved, it will just scan the music, match your entire iTunes library in iCloud, in the cloud. And the best part of that is you can now not only listen to those songs on your other devices, but you can even download those songs. So I'll give you an example. I'm on my uh, desktop computer uh, here at the office. I have at home my entire iTunes library. I paid 25 bucks. It's 25 bucks a year for iTunes Match. Pressed a button. Took a quite a few hours because I have 10,000 songs. Went through all my songs. The limit, by the way, I think is 25,000 songs. That's, that's a pretty big library. Went through all my songs, matched them all up, uploaded those it didn't have. Now, the only exception is if it's 96 kilobits per second or less. If it's a low-quality audio, it won't match it, but that's easy to fix. You just re-encode it in iTunes at a higher bit rate. It will match it. Now, here's the beauty of it. I don't have any music on my office computer. I launch iTunes, log into my iTunes account, and all of the songs that I've, uh, I've matched, didn't have to upload most of them, because iTunes has, what is it, 18 million songs. All of the songs that it matched are available to me as high-quality AAC unprotected music. I can actually press a button and download all 10,000 of those matched songs on my office computer and duplicate my library, better than duplicate it, because they're much higher quality in many cases than the CDs I ripped 10 years ago. So this is a really nice feature. But, but David's asking an important question. Was it David? Was that his name? He's asking an important question. What happens next year if I don't pay the $25? Nothing. Those songs are yours to keep. It's done. It was a one-time fee. Why would you want to continue to pay for two reasons? One, if you have new music that you want iTunes to match, because every time you rip a new CD, you might want to do this. Two, so that you can stream. And this is really what you're paying the $25 for. If you've done the iTunes match, you can download the songs or you can pull out your iPad without downloading the songs, look at the list and say, let's play that one. Now, in fact, it does download that song as it's playing it. There's some discussion over there whether this is streaming or downloading, but it does download the song while you're playing it. That feature is only available when you continue to pay. But you can re-download that entire library in the higher quality AAC, and those songs are yours forever. They're not copy protected. My guess is, I haven't seen anybody talk about this, uh, Apple and Amazon both do this, that there is some fingerprinting on there so that they know that song is yours. 
uh, not somebody else's. This is to discourage piracy. You're not tempted then to put that song on BitTorrent and let other people get it. Uh, in Amazon's case, they actually embed, and I think iTunes did this for a while too, they embed your email address into the song. So this, I think this is a fantastic uh, deal. $25, especially, and I'll be, I'll be honest, many of the songs, I don't know where they came from. Some of them came from Napster. Maybe some of them were ripped CDs. Maybe some of them I never paid for. They were pirated. All of them get replaced by high-quality, legitimate copies, and, and you're golden. So it is a really, really good ID. Um, Psycho Mockhead, <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it, Psycho Mockhead, says, uh, yes, the fingerprinting in the iTunes uh, songs is your Apple ID. Uh, that makes sense. They did that for a long time. Uh, so you're, So don't be tempted to now share these songs. In a way, and I'm sure the music industry kind of thought this was a good idea. In a way, what they've done is they've replaced your pirated music with music that's tied directly to you, so you're much less likely to put it on LimeWire or BitTorrent and that kind of thing. Thanks for all the email. Again, uh, iPad today at twit.tv, or you can call and leave a voicemail. We love those. Keep them under 30 seconds. Say your name in the voicemail, where you're calling from, too, so dumb Leo doesn't, uh, doesn't forget. 757-504-IPAD. That is a toll call to our Google voicemail box, 757-504-4723. Coming up, our app cap. I think you're going to like this one. There's just one today because Sarah's... You want two? I could, give, I could give you two. Maybe I should give them two. All right. Well, that's coming up, and I've got a very special app cap to wear. Before I do that, though, I want to mention our friends at Slingbox, the gadget of the year this year and every year. Slingbox allows you to watch your television system at home anywhere you can get on the Internet, even on your iPad, on a Mac, on a PC, on your iPhone, on your Android phone, and, yes, on your iPad. It is just awesome. Just in time for the holidays. Take your iPad with you and watch your home TV anywhere you go. You can find Slingbox or see a demo at Best Buy or go to the website. This is what we've done. Slingbox.com slash twit. And you can see everything you need to know about Slingbox. Basically, just so you understand, you're going to get the Slingbox. There's a couple versions, the Solo and the Pro HD. You get that at your Best Buy. You bring it home. You hook it up to your television setup, your satellite or cable box your DVD player, your Blu-ray, your DVR. Make sure you hook that up because you can control it and play things back from it. And then you hook up the Slingbox to your internet connection. Now, you're golden. You're online. Wherever you go, you fire up the iPad app. You log into your Slingbox account. That's for your protection, of course. Only you can use it. You don't have to worry about that. You know, People won't be watching your home TV, changing your channel. <laughs> only you can use it. But you can, by the way, not only change the channel, but record, set DVR recordings, things like that. So if you forget or you hear about a show, you don't want to miss it, you're not home, you can even set DVR recordings with it. Slingbox.com slash twit. I'm a big fan. It is, for every, ga every gadget fanatic, if you say, what is the most important gadget of the last decade? I think... Almost universally, Slingbox will be on that list. It's just fantastic. Slingbox.com slash twit. I think Santa's on the roof. It's time for our app cap. And Lisa brought me this. Where, how do I turn it on? It's a very nice Santa hat, but where's the switch? There's a button? Oh, that's not distracting. <laughs> it's app cap time, our picks of, the <laughs> picks of the week. You know, if you think it's weird that this thing is jumping around on my head, you ought to feel what it feels like. Can you hear Burl Ives singing? That's bad. Well, YouTube's going to pull us down. It's like there's... It's like there's Somebody in my head. Is it dead? It's, no, it's not dead. It just it doesn't go on forever, thank God. All right. <laughs> One more time. Oh! My app cap today is something that just came out, and uh, there are a number of... Thank you. There are, <laughs> there are a number of pinball games available uh, on the iPad. It's actually the kind of the perfect pinball um, machine. You might, and if you've never played pinball on a computer before, you might say, well, that's a terrible idea. I want to be able to tilt it and bang it. Let me tell you, 
you got to take a look at this. It's called Zen Pinball. It's free. The way they make money on Zen Pinball is uh, they have additional tables that you can buy. Uh, Zen Pinball is available on a lot of different platforms. It just came out. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's cool. Just came out on the iPad. And you can see it comes with Sorcerer's Lair. So you get a full pinball table, full pinball setup, but you can also buy more. They're a buck ninety nine each. But again, this is free. Uh, you see Marvel has two tables, Captain America and Wolverine. But let's just play the free one and just show you. Uh, the single player or hot seat. Now, hot seat means that I could play with other people. I could pass it around. Each ball is a different person, just like a real pinball game. These things are amazing. Great physics simulations in here that really make it feel like a real pinball game. So the first thing that's going to happen is going to give me a tour of the Sorcerer's Lair. I should turn up the... Uh, that's all the way up. This is... You couldn't do this with real pinball games. This guy was so Welcome what, thank you. The sorcerer's land. You're so I'm so glad that you're here. So I'm gonna you get to look at this, it's got a little steam engine pulling back the wheel. Should we go all, all the way? Oh the controls are very easy. You just you just tap the screen to tap the flippers. And you know what? It's an amazing simulation. It's very realistic. And these games are really well done, very complex. It's funny, pinball was one of the games that came with Microsoft Windows some years ago. Remember that? It was like a big deal. Was it uh, XP that came with a pinball game? We've come a long way, baby. These, oh. These games are so good. They've gotten so complicated. If you're a pinball fanatic, you will love this. It's called Zen Pinball. I think you've lost me. It's a good thing Sarah's not here. I decided to do this one when Sarah wasn't here. But it's absolutely free, and that's one of the things I, I, I say really recommends it. Buy more tables if you wish, or just get hours of fun out of the sorcerers. I'm leaving so soon. Oh, shut up. <laughs> yeah, Jerry, Jerry Ellsworth would be cringing. She likes the mechanical pinball machine. But don't you love that? You've got a camera that lets you change the view around like this. Uh, there's five different, no, six, seven, eight, nine different views. So you really can make yourself seasick with this. It's fun. I'm sorry, uh, Psycho Machead says, I have finals this week. Don't show me that. What can I say? Zen Pinball. It's our app cap of the week. Sarah Lane will be back next week. I won't, actually. Sarah will have to do the show by herself. I'm taking the week off for Christmas, but then we'll have a best of iPad today uh, the following week. We thank you all for being here and putting up with me all by myself. Uh, we do this show, as I said. Every Thursday, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern, 22.30 UTC at twit.tv. On behalf of Sarah Lane and uh, myself, Leo Laporte, thank you for being here. We'll see you next time on iPad Today. It does feel like there's a ferret in my head.